Nice. We got a lot of people joining us. Where is everyone from? We got Arizona, Washington, Louisiana. So we got people from all over the US right now. Oh, we got another Canadian though. We got someone else from Alberta, Kansas. Nice. I like that. We got a little mixture of everyone all over the place. There's, there's sewers wherever you go. And we're just approaching two o'clock. So again, there's like a ton of people just coming into the room right now. So we're probably just going to give it like another minute or two to kind of let those final few people trickle in and, and join us. Oh, we got a lot of Canadians. Look, we got BC, yeah, Nova Scotia, close. Ottawa. Nice. There's somebody from Arizona. That's close to me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is that is close to you. Uh, is this all of your guys' yeah. first thread talks or have of, uh, some of you guys been to some of them before? It looks like some people have been here before. Third one. Oh my gosh. I love it. You are very diligent making sure you're following with our newsletters and finding out uh, when our next thread talk is. Okay. And we got some first timers too. Love it. Well, you guys are going to be in for a treat today, especially like the ones of uh, some of you that have been joining us for a few of the thread talks already. I think now that it's two o'clock, we're going to get started and whoever just comes in will come in. But um, I just want to say hi to everyone again. I did the Invisibil talk. And so this is my second presentation at a thread talk. Stephanie did the last one on spaghetti. So again, my name is Callista. I've actually been with Wonderfill um, working here for seven years now, but pretty much all my life. <laughs> I have been uh, with Wonderfill. Um, and today we're joined with a special guest. We are joined with Kim, Kim Rado from Starry Night Hollow. So if you want to just say hi to everyone quickly and hey, introduce everybody. yourself. Nice to see you all. Can't wait till I can see you all again in person. But this is this is actually fun. This is my first big Zoom. So I'm looking forward to this. Perfect. Yeah, Kim has a lot of like awesome samples prepared. So you're going to see some really nice stuff from her. And then actually also joined with us today, um, also in Calgary at our office. You can actually see she's on the other side. So we're not in the same room, but we have Marge. Marge just gave up a little bit of a wave over there. Um, she is uh, one of our wonderful thread educators. So what is a thread educator? Someone that knows a ton about thread and sewing and machines. So between the three of us, I think we're gonna be able to answer everyone's questions today regarding Razzle and Dazzle, which is today's topic. Okay, so we'll jump right into things. I think we don't need too much more of an introduction, but we are wonderful. We're a Canadian thread company and we carry 36 lines of thread all the way from like number three all the way to 100 weight. So pretty much every thickness in between as well. So anytime you need to think about what thread do I need for this project, you can probably come to us first and we'll probably have something that fits your needs. Um, so like I said, today's topic is going to be Razzle and Dazzle. For those of you guys that have never used Razzle and Dazzle before or have never heard of Razzle or Dazzle before, we're going to cover everything from like pretty basic stuff to even some more advanced techniques as well. So don't worry, there's going to be information for everyone. And I hope everyone can leave here today learning something new and feeling like, you know, inspired to try something. So Razzle and Dazzle, I'm going to hold up a spool beside me right now. They are these threads here. So this is Razzle, this is Dazzle. They are essentially the same threads, except um, Dazzle actually carries one strand of metallic in it. So that's what gives it more of like that shimmery, shiny look. And so both of them are actually 100% rayon thread. Uh, they're six ply, so they're very heavy. And they're both eight weight as well. So the eight weight threads, um, I don't know if you guys have used them before or have any experience with them, but they will actually not go through the eye of your needle. So I actually received a lot of questions beforehand when you guys signed up to do the thread talk. We always ask if you guys have any questions that you want us to answer. Um, so 
No, the answer is these do not actually go through the eye of your needle. However, we can still use these threads on the machine and we will be showing you guys how to do that. But I just want to talk a little bit more about the threads. They're 100% rayon. The dazzle has a bit of metallic in it. It's kind of like twisted into there, so it's not fully metallic. So you'll see more of it be like a little bit more shimmery and shiny. So it's got a really elegant look and it's not just like in your face metallic. And because both of these are rayon threads, they carry a really beautiful sheen to them. You could you can actually see that in in the lighting on my camera. You see how it just like catches the light and has that really beautiful sheen there. So it's great for embellishment and decorating your projects and creating crafts with these as well is really fun. And I just kind of want to talk a little bit about how we're going to go through this Zoom class and everything like that. Um, I do have a really awesome coworker with me. Her name is Mora. So she's going, I might be calling out to her from time to time because she's going to help me put pictures up on the screen or flip to different pages to show you guys more detailed looks about, uh, more detailed um, looks of some of the samples that I have here with me today and of Kim samples as well. And we did ask you guys to submit questions ahead of time. We're going to try to answer as much of them as we can. Some of them are built into my talk. So hopefully I can cover those points. And anything that I don't cover, feel free to like just ask questions all along the way or anything like that at all. I think it really helps when you guys are engaging and helps us like guide the talk like towards what you want to learn and hear about as well. So don't be shy, make comments, like talk to each other, talk to us. We have someone monitoring everything that's coming in. So if we can answer, answer it in the chat, we will. Or if it needs to be a question that gets answered at the end or even in the middle of when we're speaking, we'll do that as well and try to like accommodate everyone's questions. And um, Marge will be doing some demos for us today. So that's actually a new thing that we've never done yet on our thread talks. I've always just kind of shown you guys samples and sat here and talk about thread. And amazingly enough, you guys have all stayed till the end and continued to listen, even though it's just me. But today we're gonna make it a little bit interesting and we're gonna have some live demos as well. And of course we have a guest speaker. So I think those are gonna be some fun additions for you guys that are third timers. Okay, so we're gonna get right into things. Um, and before I do that, I do wanna say at the end of the thread talk, like you guys always know, we're gonna do a giveaway and I actually prepared a couple packs of Kim's Starry Night Dazzle thread. So that's the big reason she's here with us today. I don't know if you guys know, but Kim actually has um, her own collection of Dazzle with us. So we have some beautiful varieties here. So we're gonna be giving these away at the end to two lucky winners so make sure you stay till the end because that's when we do draw the prizes and we do have some exclusive exclusive offers for everyone as well so stay tuned for that all right let's get into it we have razzle and dazzle so we actually have a lot of different colors of razzle and dazzle it's actually one of the lines that carries like the most amount of colors we have Razzle in the Wonderfill collection. So this is like the original collection of colors that we have. And as well, we actually have more colors from Sue Spargo's line of Razzle as well. So combined, there's like a hundred colors of Razzle here. And actually in Sue's line of Razzle, she actually has some variegated colors. And so the Wonderfill line does not carry these colors, but when we created more colors with Sue Spargo, she did create some really, really fun variegated colors as well. So what I'm holding in my hand are actually color books with like the real thread on them. So for those of you that don't know what color to choose or just like to know what's available, these are always available to purchase, but of course we offer them digitally as well. So you can always go onto our website, wonderfill.ca and under products there's a tab called resources and we have all our hints and tips and all of our thread charts actually available online so you guys can download them you guys can like print them out i know some people actually just use them as like a checklist to to mark down like their own inventory of like which ones they have so when they go visit the store or like the shows they know exactly which ones they need to buy and which ones they already have duplicates of and you know 
I'm going to say more than one time, there's been a lot of quilters that come in and end up buying the exact same color because they always gravitate towards the same colors that they love. So that might be actually a good way for you guys to remember what you already have and what maybe you don't have yet. And then we also have a lot of colors of Dazzle too, actually 105 colors now. So this is like the original colors that Wonderful came out with. Of course, like I said, we are going, these are available online to look at. I'm just showing you the real ones that we have here. And then Sue Spargo also has a line of Dazzle colors with us. So her colors are actually gorgeous. I love her colors as well. And then Kim, Kim has uh, the funnest line of Dazzle pretty much because she thought to do something very unique, which was to do a variegated Dazzle, which we did not have before. So um, I don't know, Kim, if you want to like come in and just talk about what inspired you thinking of this. Well, and it's funny because I'm watching some of your, your comments too. And so I did a lot of applique with wool and with fabric and I was loving, loving the variegated, but I do like a little bit of sparkle in some of the things that I do. So at a show, I, I, I drive them crazy because my boot lucky has been close to them many times. And I said to Andrew, I'm like, well, why can't we variegate these pretty <laughs> sparkly things? And he said, because of the way that they're made, you can't do that. So I said, well, if I wanted to incorporate different colors, how would we do that? And he goes, well, let me think about it. I'm very busy right now. But he did get back to me. And how we did it was we did, there's four strands of four different colors and then one strand of a colored metallic. And it looks, it, it comes out beautiful. And some of the samples you'll see later on you'll be able to see how, where it isn't an actual variegation in the length of the strand, you'll be able to see the blend of the different colors throughout. I, I have some of your colors here with me in this beautiful box that will be available after this, but you can really see how hers are different than like the typical dazzle. Like this is just a blue color all the way through and her colors really give so much dimension because of that the the colors you chose for the variegation too you have a lot of like really contrasted stuff and then you have some things that are more like blended together and it creates like a really really unique look and they're very fun colors so we'll be coming out with a color chart with kim's colors soon too but right now the only color chart that's available is online but well you guys can keep a eye out for that okay so Next, I want to talk about what sizes these threads are available in as well. So like I was holding up before, this is the small size of Dazzle. And so this is really great if you're doing more like hand projects, something where you need a bit of thread or a bit of color, but you don't need a ton of it or anything like that. And so this is great for just embellishment projects that you're doing by hand. And then, of course, we're going to get into some things that you can do on the machine as well. And in that case, you, you kind of want a bigger spool. So then we have these bigger guys here. And so these ones are 200 yards compared to these smaller ones. These are only 50 yards. So there's four times as much on these guys. Or maybe if you like to do hand stuff and you only use like one color a lot, you can, of course, get these larger ones. And for the people that really love Dazzle, we have the 450 yard cone. So these are the three sizes that are available. Just so you guys know, that is what exists for this thread line. Okay, so um, let's get into the usages of Razzle and Dazzle and what they can be used for. I know you're thinking, wait, but if I can't put it through the eye of my needle, like what, how many other things can you actually do with the thread? And the answer is actually a lot. There's a lot of stuff you can do with the thread. I'm going to show you each one that you can do. So we're going to actually start with machine. Kim is going to cover pretty much more of the hand stuff and she has so much fun stuff. I'm going to leave her for the end because then, you know, she can run on <laughs> and I don't have to stop her due to time constraints. So we'll cover the machine well, stuff close first. The laptops or whatever if you need to. <laughs> yes, I can go on. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to be like, Kim, wait, stop. We're running over time. But it's just because you're so fun and you have so many things to talk about. 
Okay, so I don't know if you can guess what the first technique is, but the first thing that comes to mind about what you can do on a sewing machine when you are using Razzle or Dazzle is actually couching. So couching is a technique where this thread does not actually go through the eye of your needle, but rather it lays on the fabric and the thread that's in your machine is going to be what stitches this thread down. So you would pretty much have, um, let me try to pull a strand out here for you guys. So you would pretty much lay a strand of this thread onto your fabric here. And some of you guys might have couching feet or like cording feet that come with your machine already. And it's also okay if you guys don't, because we're gonna show you how you can still do this technique if you don't have that type of foot. But pretty much you're going to stitch over top of this strand of thread. And that's going to be how it gets held down onto your fabric and create that couched look. So of course, couching isn't so boring that it's only one strand of thread that sits on your fabric and a zigzag that goes over top. No, we're going to show you all the fun ways that you can do couching. So I'll start with the easy stuff for sure, which is a single strand of couched thread. And then here we actually just use a zigzag stitch on top of it. So this is like pretty much the most basic, the simplest form of couching. So when you're choosing a stitch to couch down your razzle or dazzle thread, pretty much what you're looking for is like a horizontal element to that stitch. So it actually can like hold the thread down and there's something to kind of like tack it down on either side. So that actually means we don't have to just use the zigzag stitch. We can use all the fun stitches that your machines come with that I know you guys never touch. You guys have the nicest <laughs> machines and we only stick with those few stitches right at the front all the time. But there's actually tons of decorative stitches that your machines come with and now is the time to play. So I have this other sample here and we're actually gonna put some on the screen as well. But you can actually see, let me try to cover my face completely so this focuses. But you can actually see here we have a lot of different types of stitches. We have some zigzag ones. We have some with like the little flowers and leaves, the ones that look like stars or X's and, and things like that as well. But this really gives you a chance to play. And we're actually gonna jump to Marge in a second and she'll show you how to kind of do this couching technique. But I kind of wanna show you the different types of ways you can couch. and. Even if you do something as simple as just a single line, a single strand of thread and choosing something on top and doing it with a zigzag, you guys can actually think about how thread color is going to affect the look of your couched um, sample as well. Because um, if you use, say, Invisafil, which is our lightest thread line and very, very fine. If you couch with that over top, it's almost going to look like your thread is like floating on your fabric because you're not going to see that zigzag on top. So you'll get that really bold stitch. But then people might be wondering, wait, how did you actually sew that on there? Because you don't see the thread on top that's holding it down. So that's one way to do it. And then another way is you can use variegated thread. A variegated thread can actually change how that couched line is going to look a lot. And I'm going to show you right here because if you guys can actually see, it looks like there's a lot of different colors happening and it kind of goes from blue to silver and brown and everything like that. But the thread that we used to, to, for the couching, which was like the dazzle, is actually only blue color. But we ended up using a mirage color, which is a variegated thread line that we carry to, to do the zigzags over top. And so with that, it actually looks like it changes the look of like the whole like <laughs> thread underneath it. So that's a really fun and neat way to think about, to approach couching essentially like these ones as well. We're pretty much using like a pink strand of thread, but because we used a variegated color with purples and blues in it, you actually don't even, 
realize that the strand that you're couching down is just purely pink. And that's because you created a really unique effect by adding that variegated thread on there. And then my next favorite thread that I use for couching is metallic, because metallic just adds that extra sparkle and shine. Um, if you're already using Dazzle, it's going to give it that extra even more pizzazz than it already has. But if you're doing it on Razzle, then it'll give like a very subtle, you know, metallic look to it as well. And that all looks really nice too. And this is actually just a black piece of fabric, but we couched on, like we couched rows and rows and rows of stitches using all the different types of decorative stitches. And it almost looks like it created its own fabric as well. So you can definitely do that. You can create your own look just by using thread. And I think, you know, for those of you guys that have fabric that you bought in that moment, but then you look at it and you're like, it's not as pretty as I thought I remembered it was when I first bought it and you don't know what to use it for, you can try couching on it and decorating it with thread and it totally changes, it could totally change the look of your fabric overall because I don't think you would look at this and think, oh, you use just like black. It, it's so textured and cool with all that thread on there. It almost looks like its own, its own fabric and its own pattern, but you have the power to create that yourself. And yes, someone wrote that it has such a nice texture and yes, exactly. Because that thread is heavy, it does create such a nice texture for, for your project. So that's definitely some fun ways to do that. And as well, on your quilts, you can actually go around the binding or the edge of your quilt with some couching and just kind of like add a bit of like pop or make it look unique in its own way. And this is actually using that Invisifil that I was talking about earlier. Let me try to get it to zoom. So it actually looks like the thread is just existing there on its own or as if you stitched with it with your needle. But this is actually all couched with Invisifil and you don't even see that thread at all. Like you do not, it doesn't cut into it. And that's the power of using a super light and fine thread. And here, I'll, I'll, I'll prove that I'm not lying because you can see the zigzag on the back from the bobbin when we use the Invisifil, but you do not even see the zigzag in the front, even though I'm holding it very close to the camera, it doesn't even pick any of that up. And then I have, I know it doesn't end and I'm always like, and then here's another fun way. But this is another actually really fun project. I've done one of these myself, but it is an infinity scarf. Now you don't have to do it exactly like this, but you know, sometimes if you have scraps of fabric or what we did here is that we actually just only couched on a washable stabilizer in a loop. And we, and we created a really cool, fun infinity scarf. And that's done with the eight weight. And then we used a, vari a variegated mirage over top to couch it down. So I will try to hold it up, but you can kind of see the little zigzags on there. So it kind of ends up just wrapping around the thread after you wash away that stabilizer on the back. But it's really unique. Um, so I'm, I'm seeing some questions starting to trickle in about like tension or things that you do on your machine to couch. And now that I'm, I'm going to show you a few more photos of some of our samples. So if more, you can pull that up. And then after I'm going to switch to Marge and she's actually going to live demo to you guys how to do couching, how to set up your machine and everything like that as well. But you see here, again, we only used black fabric and then we just played with all the decorative stitches that our machines have and created really unique looks. Um, like I said, you only need that, you, need, you just need to make sure you find a stitch that has a horizontal element so then it can like hold down that strand of uh, razzle or dazzle that you're using. Again, just really fun ways to stitch and play on your machine. You can flip through these Mora, yeah, we use different colors, but using a variegated thread on top really changes the look of that thread. It's not just like yellow or blue or pink. It, it, it creates a really unique look. So couching is one thing and then playing around. Oh, if you could just stay here for a sec more, I'm gonna talk about something is as well, when you're couching, you don't just have to use one strand of thread. You can use multiple 
two or three, or you can even twist it into a cord and couch down that cord. So you can actually see here, we were using three strands of thread and we couched over top all three of those. And like I said, more, uh, Marge is going to actually teach you guys how to do some of these techniques now. So maybe if we can join Marge now over in our sewing room on the other side. All right, Marge. Oh, spotlight Marge. Hello. Um, what I'm going to do right at this very moment is show you how I set up this machine to do couching. And we're going to do a three, start off with a three, th uh, three chords three strands of Kim's thread. Very nice thread, by the way, Kim. Thanks, Mark. Awesome. <laughs> okay. How do you do this? We have here, uh, we call this a thread tamer. And one of the things I really like about it is the couching slots. Gone are the days when you hold your thread in front of your machine, it falls on your lap, rolls onto the floor, and then your cat takes it and runs away with it. Now it just, sits they each have their own threads uh, spool pin and we have a slot here and i'm just going to pull one of my threads out so we have a slot and you just slide your thread through how cool is that i'm going to be stitching the thread down uh, down with a metallic thread and i have it sitting here on its own separate thread uh, spool pin now this is what we call our cops size metallic thread it comes in 150 meter spools i do believe over to my sewing machine okay i have a special presser foot on my sewing machine and this is depending on what part of the world you're from some ladies like to call it a cording foot and some ladies call it a couching foot. I call it a couching foot. And this is a three slot foot. Every machine brand has its own cording slash couching presser feet. You can get up to nine holes on a presser foot. Okay, so I'm just gonna snap this back on. Okay. Make sure that my metallic thread is through the slot into the back of the machine. Now I'm gonna take my three strands of uh, dazzle. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna give it a little trim here. And this is something that I learned to do at trade shows because quite often my rings would get caught in the thread and pull it out from, am I moving too fast? Oh, okay. okay. Then I'll, I'd end up pulling it out and undoing my my threading. So what I do with my threads on this press specific foot, I'm so sorry, I'm new to this, by the way. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tie a knot. Okay. Now I'm going to take all three strands and I'm going to set it in the slot. See what I'm doing here? I want to make sure the threads are underneath that presser foot, but I'm going to take each one of these threads and I'm gonna slide it into its own slot. And that's it. I'm, th I'm ready to go. I like using a couching slash cording foot because it's gonna keep my threads straight and I don't have to, you know, do too much magic with the thread. The foot's gonna do the work for me. The type of stitch that I'm going to be using, I call it a feather stitch, but on the screen of this particular machine, it calls it a patchwork. I call it a feather stitch. It's gonna cross over and catch all three strands. Marge, um, some people asked if you need a stabilizer on the back, and I see that you do. Do you wanna add a, the importance of that? This, yeah, this particular stabilizer, it's an iron on tearaway because I like to take excess stabilizer and pull it away. Um, tear away, any time that you put a, a, a stitch into it, it'll weaken it. But tear away, or the stabilizer will also keep your fabric nice and flat so that when you're using a decorative stitch, you're not gonna get the tunneling or the puckering. There we go. Find my foot control. Can 
you can see what's happening here is the needle is swinging on to both sides. You may have to go into your machine settings when you're using a, a, a couching slash cording foot and widen your stitch because not all default settings are the same width on sewing machines. So you may have to go in and adjust. So do you suggest just playing on some fabric and adjusting until it's the perfect width that you want to cover the the stitches or the oh the, exactly the, okay perfect. exactly I call it doodle fabric. <laughs> no, I always whenever I'm sewing and I'm doing any kind of decorative work, especially with with stitches and whatnot, I always have a piece of fabric sitting beside me. So and I don't have to run too many stitches. I just want to make sure it's going to do what I want it to do. Okay, so this is three strands. I'm going to take out the center stitch or center thread. I'm not going to change my stitch, but just by using uh, only two strands now, I'm going to get a different look. Oh, wow. Yeah, that really changes how that looks now that you don't have that fill in the middle. Exactly. Exactly. So we, we got a question just now that asks, how do you secure it so that it doesn't pull out? Oh, so it doesn't pull out? I think I will take the, the couch threads don't pull out yeah. yet. Yeah, the yeah. Couch, how the couch threads don't pull out. I will take a large eyed needle and I will take thread uh, my threads through and pull them to the back and then tie them off that way. Okay. Yep. I'm just going to turn the corner here for a second. Eight stitches, not a second. <laughs> now I'm going to take out one more thread here. I'm going to move this into my center position. This is, I'm now going to change my stitch. Okay. Let's see what this is. Oh, that looks good. So maybe Stephanie, would you like to show them uh -huh. this stitch here? And let me just say, okay. You can see that this is a, a um, heirloom sewing stitch or a hem stitch. So what I've done is I've chosen this stitch and by using the center um, slot on the presser foot, it's gonna fill in the center. Now I'm going to do something here. Now this is the default setting for this particular stitch. I'm going to go into my adjust settings and I'm going to narrow that stitch quite a bit. Let's take it down to five. What's, what's your reasoning for narrowing down that stitch, Marge? I want to have more of the thread showing the uh, couching or the dazzle showing as opposed to the uh, metallic thread. So really it's just playing around with the stitches, seeing what kind of oh, work. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. And now, Mark, I, yes, just a quick question. We also got what thread you are using in your bob. And I think, can I guess the answer to that question? <laughs> oh, <laughs> one gets just one. <laughs> <laughs> you must bob. be using deco bob because deco bob is the thread. <laughs> is yeah. the thread that we recommend for pretty much all of our threads in the top. Any thread, whether using a 12 weight, 100 weight, metallic thread, rayon, poly, cotton, we always use that 80 weight deco bob in the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's just oh, exactly. always been our tried and true, reliable. It's fine, but it's strong. So it's gonna reduce the bulk in what mm -hmm. you're doing, mm -hmm. but it'll still make sure that it's gonna hold everything together. And we and Marge just flipped it over so you can see on the back side. Yeah, I have found with deco bob. I do a lot or a lot of uh, decorative stitching, and I have found with uh, having deco bob in my sewing machine and going from stitch to stitch to stitch, my tension is seems to be balanced more more often. I don't have to monkey about so much mm -hmm. with my tension, and that's really important when you start playing with stitches. Because the most frustrating thing is trying to balance that top tension on decorative sewing. I've had that with both my regular machines and my long arm. I find mm -hmm. that consistency. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Any other questions? No, but I'd love to see what you finished sewing. <laughs> show it, show it, show us. Oh, yeah, I, show I, I us. forgot to show. Sorry about that. Okay, so that is excited. So this is the the, the uh, default width. So by adjusting the uh, stitch width down to a five, this was a 7.0, down to a 5.0, it just gives me a little bit, it almost looks like a pin tuck. I, I like that. I feel like it hugs it. It hugs yeah. it really nicely. Yeah. It, it, so you Good know word. that they're pretty snug and you won't feel so much that it will un, it will pull out. It's, it's exactly snag. It'll, it's in there very securely. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. actually I think my favorite part is when you went from a three strand to a two strand because you can really yeah. see that difference in like mm -hmm. how much fuller it looks as a three and like and it's fun to see like when it's just a two strand and you really see like the stitch a bit more in the middle mm -hmm. when you I leave like that the empty. Combination so. of the different threads as well. You know, exactly. I think it, it complements each other when you have like the difference in in thickness and 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 color. It just, mm -hmm. I like it a lot. The texture is very nice. Hey, the thread is our world. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty much like with couching, you can use any type of decorative thread that you want to have on mm -hmm. the top, but, and then it's up to you again to choose whether you want it like use a cord or if, like you can actually twist some threads together to make more of a cord or just use one strand or two strands or three strands. I think it's really about playing and, and seeing what 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 you like essentially. I'm gonna throw one more thing in there too, even though you don't make it, but I'll talk to Andrew. Is <laughs> you can also mix these threads with yarn strands and couch them. And it looks oh, yeah. really cool. Mm -hmm. it, it's very cool. And you can also take um, strips of wool and couch over those with these threads as well, which looks amazing also. I'll shut up um, now. So Marge, like pretty much you don't have to play too much with your tension or anything when you're couching because it really just depends on what thread you're using to do that decorative element. The couching is really just setting it in with your with your couching foot. If you don't have a couching foot, what would you recommend for everyone out there that doesn't have a couching foot? Open toe applique foot. Oh. Okay, because there's enough room underneath for your thread to flow and that's important because you're stitching over top of uh, some thicknesses. Oh, okay. I like that. And this, this, will, this helps, it helps. Yeah. But if you can get a couching foot for your it? sewing machine, do it. Will it hold it. the threads in place as well as the ones that are grooved or will you have to like continuously sort of hold them apart if you're using that foot? If you're going to be using this foot, now the, it's tricky to hold, if you're gonna do three strands, mm -hmm. it's tricky to hold it apart. Yeah. Very tricky. Yeah. Um, I would use the uh, applique foot for doing, you know, if you're going to twist your threads together, uh, maybe one or two strands, but trying to balance it around, you're not, you may, you might like the look. Yeah, but it wouldn't right? be, a, it wouldn't be a, a it wouldn't be neat and line. straight. Right. I, I have another question is what's the difference between a couching and a cording foot? <laughs> that's, that's depends what part of the world you're in. <laughs> um, seriously, I would, I would put down, I, I taught in the U.S. of A quite a bit, and if I put a cording foot down, nobody knew what I was talking about in some areas, but if I put a coaching foot, they all knew what it was. They're both the same idea. Um, in Canada, we have cording and couching feet. Cording is a, is a thicker yarn or um, a, like a thickness, like this would be considered a cording up here. So what, we're really, it together. so what we're really looking for in terms of like couching, like what you're doing is maybe something that has like one to three grooves that like mm -hmm. can just slot that one strand of razzle or dazzle thread in there. Yeah, not all machines have that though. Um, so of check the, with your local dealer essentially. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And another foot that works really well is a beading foot for your sewing machine, because then you're able to use some of the heavier, you know, you can take a bunch of dazzle, razzle, dazzle, and uh, twist it with some yarn and then stitch over top of it. And it'll fit through the group just beautifully. Okay, perfect. And uh, what else? Oh, 
I think we're getting a ton of questions on the thread tamer. You really got people interested. Do you think you can just talk a little bit more about like the setup that you have and how we're using it for couching? Mm -hmm. Let me just dismantle it a bit. I'm gonna take this off. Oh, did you see what happened? Can you see the mm -hmm. metallic thread, how it's all twisted and bunched up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, we can see a bit that. of twisting. Yeah, we don't and, want that. And, that and that's just a natural thing that happens with metallic thread, right, Marge? Exactly. exactly. It's got a little mind of its own. M actually, a fun fact is metallic actually has the best memory of any thread. So when I talk about memory, that I mean it like it remembers the shape it was in before. So that's why it holds on to that curl as if like it's still holding on to that like ring, the same shape that it was on the spool. So that's why a lot of people actually have problems sewing with metallic because it kind of like holds that curl and ends up twisting on itself. So one way we do try to eliminate that problem is with the thread tamer, right, Marge? That's right. I use my, I've got actually three thread tamers at home. I'm kind of a little <laughs> thread tamer hog. Um, and that's because I've got lots of machines that don't like moving things around. I will not go a day without using my thread tamer. And I'll, let me just show you a few things. We saw how I thread the machine or put my threads on for couching. Okay. So the thread, say the spool spins beautifully. Okay. And there's no tangling. You can use three spools of thread, three, uh, thread them up and go through each one of the slots. Am I moving around too fast? No, I'm just trying to. I think I have here. ADHD. Actually. <laughs> okay. I just, I got to do this. Sorry, guys. Okay. This is an extension with four slots in it. This comes off. Okay, so we have all these handy dandy pieces. I had my metallic thread sitting on this little baby. Okay. Metallic thread, especially when it comes on a smaller spool, the spool needs to spin so the thread comes off flat. Okay, um, this helps to, this actually will take care of your tension problems. You're not gonna get the twisting. It's not gonna pull itself out of any of the tension guide on your machine, okay? How we get this to work is we take a spool pin, slide it in here. A little trick Andrew showed me years ago is when you're using the smaller spool, a cop spool and metallic thread, is just put it on the table, okay? Then I'm going to come here and I'm going to put it into my second slot or third down from the top. Something else I like to do, and I was, I was showing Stephanie earlier, when I'm threading my machines now, and some service tech showed me this, what you do is, you know how you're trying to poke it through a thread guide and sometimes it just doesn't go for you? It's bend your, fold your thread in half and put a little twist on it. A so, loop. yeah, but you put a little twist and it, sorry, poor Stephanie, she's really <laughs> making her wage today. <laughs> Can you guys see that better? Oh, yeah, that? yeah. It kind of looks like yeah. a point because you twisted yeah, it into exactly. like yeah. a stronger point. Exactly. Then I'm going to put it in. Then I'm going to just make sure I got a little bit of tension on my thread. Okay. And slot it in. Slide this in. Now watch what happens. Look at that. How cool is that? It's just spinning. Yeah, Did and that notice? really straightens out that thread before you go in. It does, it really does. When I was sewing, when I was couching there, I didn't adjust my tension at all. Going from one technique to another with my metallic thread on. Of course, I've got deco bobbin, the bobbin, which really helps as well. Now, another spool of thread Okay, I wanna, I'm gonna th use, show. The more Zoom things I'll do, the less nervous I'll be. I'm just gonna take this off because you wanna be able to use your larger spools of metallic thread as well. Take this off. <laughs> Nobody saw that. There we go. And this is what I do is I'll put my thread on, a spool pin, 
Yeah, so the, I just want to say that the bottom pins aren't just for like feeding it through the couching slot. You can definitely use any of your threads to just like put that on those bottom pins and then feed it up and then into your sewing machine as well. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how I do the, the larger spools of thread because the smaller spools, metallic thread works best when the spool is turning. But if you try to put, you, this will not fit on the horizontal spool pin. Um, so it has to go on a vertical spool pin and you don't want to try to put it on uh, the stand up spool pin on your sewing machine because that'll just mess up your tensions. You're not going to get a good tension. So what I started doing years ago, because I thought this is really cool. And I looked at some industrial machines and I saw something that they do. They weave the thread in and out of the thread guides. So I come in and I go back. And I do this again. Okay. Now, if as the thread's coming off, it still has some bends in it, right? But weaving it in and out will take out some of those bends. Yeah, we can faintly so, see that line. There. <laughs> that it looks Sorry. like it's straightened out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Thanks, Marge. Well, I'm going to hop back in here because now I want to talk about the next te next technique and give you a little time to set up for the next thing that you're going to demonstrate. <laughs> Thank so, Marge, you. if you could just spotlight my video again. I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment that we had on. Um, I think you have to spotlight my video. Yeah. Spotlight for me. Perfect. Yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoyed that little segment that we had about couching. And so I want to hop into the next thing that you can do um, on your machine. Again, it doesn't go through the eye of your needle, but actually you can still sew with it in your machine. So how do we do that? It's called bobbin work. I don't know if you guys have heard about this before or if this is your first time hearing about it, but bobbin work is actually um, kind of like reverse sewing um, where you have your heavier thread or your more decorative thread, the, the thing that you want to see in your bobbin and then you have your what you typically would have as your bobbin thread on the top so then you would sew with your with your fabric like with the right side down and so you're sewing on the back of your fabric instead so when you do this you want to trace out the design or where you want it to be because you're going to be sewing up to, upside down. You're not, you, you can't see the front side of it. So you want to make sure you're tracing whatever you want on the back side of your fabric. And the reason we do this is only pretty much when you have heavier threads, there's really no reason to do bobbin work if your thread can fit through the eye of your needle. But when it can't, like in the case of Razzle and Dazzle, then we can do bobbin work. So some people just really like that bold look sometimes. And if they don't want to do couching or and everything like that, you can stitch with it on your machine. And it just adds that little bit of pop or a little bit of texture, even more than what would be available to you as like a top thread that you would typically find. So the heaviest weight that we can sew with through our needle is actually a 12 weight. So that would be either in, in, in the case of Wonderful Threads, I would be like Accent, which is a 12 weight rayon or Glamour, which is a 12 weight rayon with a metallic thread. So I would call those like the little sisters of um, Razzle and Dazzle. But if you want even more texture than that and to just add more pop onto your quilts, then you can definitely consider doing bobbin work. And this is a really good example because this is already heavy weight thread that we have here. This is actually 12 weight thread already. So like a single strand of that really already like pops up a lot, but then I'm going to go down and you really see this come through even more. So you can see it because these are both green, but this is the eight weight and this is the 12. So it actually even makes it look like the 12 weight recedes into the background a little bit more and like the 12 or and the eight weight pops out to the front. So a lot of what using heavier threads can do is just, you know, creating that dimension, creating that texture on your projects. So yeah, it's really just about how it can help you achieve the look that you want to achieve as well. Um, I do want to 
zoom into some samples that I have. So I'm actually going to get Maura to screen share for me. And we're going to take a look at this other quilt that we have here. And it's also some really nice flowers. Just looking at it from a distance, you can actually see the edges of those flowers pop out. It almost looks like there's like a bit of shading around the edge. And you can tell even in a photo that it's not flat. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you look at something in it and it looks like a flat piece, but you really feel those flowers kind of like popping out at you and actually have quite a shape to them. So I'm going to show you guys a closer image of one of, of some of these flowers so you can see. And this is all done with bobbin work. So you can see we used a bit of razzle and dazzle um, to get those pops of color in, but it really adds a lot of texture. And even though the pieces in the back are also appliqued and the piece in the front is also appliqued. Because we did that bobbin work around the edge of the flower, it like pops that flower out right to the front and everything behind it kind of just sits back and it really does create that, you know, dimension in your piece. And you can see it from the side too. It really adds quite a bit of volume and texture to the design. And, and it can be like a really big design element too, to add the, that texture. So it's not always just about the color or whatever fabric you have or the design of the actual pattern, but adding like heavy threads or things like that can really change the piece and create that really nice contrast. Um, so that top thread that we used in that flower piece I just showed you is actually um, Dazzle, I believe. And I'm going to actually hop over back to Stephanie and Marge now. We have a really great bobbin work sample that's on the wall and I want to show you guys. I didn't real, I was looking for it all over the office because I wanted to show you guys and I was like, where is it? And it turns out it was hanging on the wall the whole time. So Stephanie, if you could show us that koi on the wall because that is all bobbin work. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I'm just going to step over here. So you can actually see this whole fish is actually done by bobbin work. So it, it's kind of like monogramming in a way, like this is all just line work, but it really, it really pops out on, on the fabric and it's just really, just thread that creates this whole design. So it doesn't always have to be something that you're piecing together to create a design on a quilt or anything like that, but you can do that with thread as well. You can create like a whole piece of art just by doing some, this is kind of like thread painting in a way a little bit, but with bobbin work at the same time. So that's a really, really cool way to do it. Um, and I think Marge is actually going to teach us now how to do bobbin work. I know some people might be intimidated, but Marge, you're going to make it really easy for everyone, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make it <laughs> no as easy as possible. Bobbin work is a lot of fun. Now, I'm just going to take things apart on my machine just to do just to show you a couple things here isn't that cool okay I so what you do you just took off the plate right yeah i had to on this particular machine okay okay because i needed access to my bobbin case guys now, don't be scared yet i know we have to touch the bobbin case but don't be scared it'll be worth it we promise <laughs> I do have a little tip, okay? I like to keep two bobbin cases, one for my bobbin work and one that's just left alone for my regular sewing. And the reason for that is you really need to back off the tension on a regular bobbin case, bobbin work, uh, a bobbin case for bobbin work because the thread's very thick. Now, I do know some ladies, someone, some will say, well, why do you even have to put it into the tension disc of the bobbin case? I just find I have a little bit more control and my, my bobbin work is a little bit more balanced. So I splurge, I treat myself to an extra bobbin case. That way, I can adjust my tension cord. I can play around with it and not worry about it. Because this particular bobbin case, I'm going to have to set it back again. Um, 
I just need to show you here. This is the screw that adjusts the tension on my bobbin case, okay? Uh, I, I just want to interrupt very quickly. Yeah. A lot of people are asking about uh, winding the bobbin for the bobbin oh. work. We haven't gotten we haven't gotten that to that yet. So Marge, I just want you to continue with the okay. bobbin case first, and then okay. I just want to tell people that it's on the way, and don't worry, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. So you want to back off the tension, and it's righty tighty, lefty loosey. Those are the rules, and you back it off a lot, okay? Because when I put my bobbin in. And I'll talk about winding it in a moment. I'm just going to set it in and I'm going to put it through. And the key is I want no tension on that. I want a little bit of tension, but not a ton. See how fast it comes? Mm. So you tested it first before you started I, sewing it by just like always. by just threading it through like normal and then just pulling it to make sure that it is coming off with not a lot of resistance. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Okay. So here's the fun part. This is a class 15 bobbin and you get to hand wind it. <laughs> Just hand wind it. And you can tell I'm not, I'm not a machine, so it's uneven, but that's okay. That part's okay. And you're not going to get a lot of thread on a bobbin. So those of us who have the L size bobbins, you're going to be hand winding quite a few. Yeah, I think a good tip is just if you are doing a project that is bobbin work to just wind a few extra bobbins so you don't have to stop mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah, just wind again. There. Just have a few extra sitting on the side yeah. ready to go once you run yeah. out of one. And that's where the thread tamer comes in because you can put your bobbin thread, here we go. My bobbin thread on, put it through the slot and then you can just keep winding. Yeah, and then the thread doesn't like fall everywhere or get too loose. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so now I'm going to put my machine back together. Every machine's a little bit different. Um, so if you're not comfortable with taking uh, the bobbin case out to put in a new bobbin case, I always recommend go to your dealer, get them to give you a mini lesson on how to do it. It's a good idea to take it out anyway, because you can always get in there and get some of that lint out. little messages on my machine. There we go. Just so on this particular machine. Like normal, right? No, not on this particular machine. Um, okay. This machine here, if I was using regular thread, I would take it and go around like this, but I'm not going to. Um, and before I get too far ahead, please do not use your built-in thread snips on your sewing machine. Your thread snips won't last very long. Uh, the built-in thread snips are not made for the heavier threads in your bobbin. Now I'm using a matching thread on top. And I'm going to, um, as far as the presser foot, I'm using a applique presser foot on this machine. And the reason for that is, uh, is the um, nice deep groove underneath. So my threads will, will uh, they won't get caught up. I have a question, Marge. What foot would you use if you were doing bobbin work, but free motion? I would use a free motion machine embroidery foot. I will okay. be showing that here. This is one of them. Okay. Okay. And they come in different, like the Bernina foot, free motion foot looks a little bit different than this one. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I really enjoy about the uh, free motion feet is quite often I'll take out that center piece because I like an open toe. I like to see where I'm going. And then that way there's no shadows. Okay. So I'm going to just pop my applique foot on. Um, if you don't have an applique foot, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, use your uh, regular stitching foot. But if it doesn't work, jump into an uh, applique foot. There we go. I need my fabric. 
And this what is upside down. Else, what thread are you using on top right now? Someone just asked that question. Designer. Okay, I'm using so we're just designer. using a we're just using a forty weight thread on top right now. Yeah. Okay, here we go. It's a, it's just what you would like to have as your bobbin kind of on the other side because it's going to end up being your bobbin thread. What's on top? Yes. Upside down sewing. When if when you're doing a straight stitch or any decorative stitch, always lengthen the stitch. Okay, or uh, lengthen it, give it uh, more stitch density, further, have it further apart, because you don't want the stitches bunching up on top of each other. I think that's a great rule of, th of thumb, whether whenever you're using any type of heavy thread. So even exactly. if you're using like a 12 weight, make sure you lengthen your stitch length so then you don't get all that thread bunching up together. Oh, cool. And that's how it looks on the back. And it, and it looks like you just sewed like, regular on the front but yeah. now we've got eight weight regularly exactly play around with your stitches always do a stitch test yeah so bobbin work isn't just straight stitching we can do decorative stitching and everything like that as well when you're using decorative stitches you will have to adjust your tension That's okay just how it is Okay, and usually you have to tighten it as opposed to lowering it. So in your bobbin. The... No, on the top. On the top, okay. Going into your machine. Um, so here we go. We can adjust things here and you're just going to uh, increase. Now some machines, you've got the um, tension dial on the outside and you would just turn the tension dial up. And Marge, when you're doing your bobbin work, how do you like, do you have any tips on how you know where you're going or what the best way to kind of do your design is so then you're not ruining what you have on the front? Actually, I, um, I've done a lot of uh, crazy quilting. Um, I don't have samples here, I'm sorry. But usually I will stitch down my quilting pieces on a piece of uh, like a piece of canvas or another piece of fabric because that way my straight stitch line like here that would be something that would be my guide oh, okay and here i just drew a mark i just put a mark here uh for the free motion that i'm going to do off this foot and I like to lower my feed dogs. So just like regular free motion then, you're lowering your feed exactly. dogs, you're putting in that free motion foot, even though we do have bobbin work in here. That's right, yeah. Don't sew super fast with bobbin work. Go at moderate speed. I know some of us just like to put the pedal to the metal, but that, yeah. Just take your time, enjoy every stitch. And I always like to uh, take and make sure my top thread is underneath the foot before I start. Some machines, when you're doing free motion, some machines, here we go. Okay. Some machines you need to hold the thread when you take that first stitch. Okay, that's a good okay. tip, thank you. I went, my needle went down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my bobbin thread, if it allows me to, to the top here. Do you see what I did there? So now yeah, I don't, just... now when I start sewing, oops, yeah, okay. Now, here we go. I'm just going to kind of go along that line. Oh, let's go crazy. And you want to try to keep those stitches a little bit further apart. So I'm just meandering here, and this adds a real nice technique to anything. And 
I would take and thread, use a large eye needle and, and uh, pull this to the back and then just tie them off. Great. Awesome, thank you. And that's just with one stitch. So imagine some of us have what, three, 400 stitches on a machine. <laughs> it's a lot of stitches, yeah. Awesome. Thank they can you, have Mark. a whole lot of fun with it. You bet, thank you. All right, now we're gonna move on to the next thing here is we have finally another type of way to use it on the machine, but now we're not talking about the sewing machine. We're gonna talk about surging. So surging on the with Razzle and Dazzle is another fun way to use this thread. Um, let me find my sample here, but it's a great way to do a decorative edge, whether you wanna finish, just kind of even like finish like a little table mat or anything like that. It's a great way to um, add something fun or even onto clothing as well. You can always finish like a t-shirt or a sleeve with some decorative surging and that's what we would use Razzle and Dazzle for. I was looking everywhere and it's right in front of me, but it, it's really bold and it adds like an actual like really nice kind of like finished look to it. Of course, this is just like a piece of fabric right now and it is contrasting, but you could definitely take like elegant colors like the silver or the gold and add some nice trim onto a lot of different types of clothes. And one of the questions that we did get asked is whether or not the thread is washable. And, and definitely the thread is washable. You definitely always want to use it more in that decorative capacity. You don't want to be using it for anything that's holding stuff together because rayon is not the best type of thread for that rayon is def definitely more for decorative purposes oh i'm glad some people are new to thinking about using this on the sewing uh, on the serger um you can actually use this for flat locking and everything like that as well um, i'm not going to talk too long because we need to get to kim's portion about uh, some hand sewing, but I'm going to jump back to Marge because she already has her serger set up. So we're going to talk about how you would use this in your serger. And I believe she has a couple samples um, in front of her as well that um, if you could add. Oh, perfect. Okay. Back to you, we Marge. lost you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I have a couple things, samples to show you before I uh, sew on the serger here. I have a 45 minute quilt top that I did. And all I did was flat lock on my surgery using Dazzle. Took my, it, and these were, this was uh, a jelly roll actually. So I just took my strips, just sewed them together and that was it, that 45 minutes, fast and easy. So Another can, you thing, that, can you open that sample up for us to see a little bit? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Do you want me to hold it? <laughs> <laughs> She's going to okay. muck up my surgery here. She's waving it around. <laughs> anyway. See how simple that is? And it looks good. And that only took you 45 minutes? That's like yep. probably the fastest a quilt of that size has ever been put together. <laughs> Surgeries go fast. <laughs> zoom, zoom. Okay. And what's the, other, thing, what's the other sample you have to show us? This is a uh, crazy uh, piecing, quilting, um, and I just piece my fabrics together using the serger. In fact, the only thing that wasn't done on the serger, this little table runner, is the binding. That was it. Wow. And the rest of it was done on the Everything serger? Else. Yeah. Yeah. And this is with Dazzle. It's with Dazzle. It's almost like you don't have to add too much quilting or anything to it afterwards anyways, because you get that really nice decorative element in there with the surging. Yeah, it kind of gives you uh, like a braiding effect. Yeah. Very cool. Can you show us how, how to do some of these techniques on the machine now? I believe you have some I'm things sure lined can. up for us. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Rule number one. When you're surging, make sure there's nothing behind your serger. That's rule number one, okay? Um, now I've got uh, Dazzle on my machine. Um, I want you to, uh, I'm using my thread tamer again. 
because this thread, if you put it on your spool pins, it will twist. And we don't want the twisting because that's going to pull itself out of your one, one or two of your thread guides. So and just to show you, so as the thread comes off, the spool is doing a complete turn. Makes it, a, makes it easy to use. Oop, there I am getting myself all caught up. This is set up for a wide three thread. When you're using decorative threads, uh, especially uh, dazzle, razzle, dazzle, uh, I find the look a lot nicer with the widest stitch that you can possibly get. You're not going to do a four thread with that, with this, uh, with razzle, dazzle. You only use three threads. Okay, you always have to use your loopers and then one needle. You can, if you're fortunate enough to have a cover stitch machine or a searcher that can do um, a cover stitch or a, okay, my mind just went, it's old ageism, um, a chain stitch is also very nice. And then you're only gonna use one needle and then your chain stitch looper to do the dazzle. Okay, now we were doing couching on the sewing machine a little bit earlier. So if you have a serger that can stitch on air, you can make some of your own cording. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's cool. It is really cool, really cool. <laughs> and you can use for the needle, you can use whatever thread you like. I find I like to use designer because the designer thread is made for speed. It's inexpensive. It can go nice and fast as well. So I have this machine is a baby lock ovation. It's a jet air threading machine. I'm not trying to plug the machine or whatever, but it does thread up really fast and simple. I do have to say there are some sergers and I, I I'm just going to plug another one of our beautiful threads here. Every once in a while, there will be a serger that does not like to have uh, use a heavier thread. Okay, if it doesn't like an eight weight thread or whatnot, but have no fear because we do have another thread that I've used in a lot of my uh, serger classes, and it's Glamour. That, it is a that was what I mentioned a little earlier, the little mm -hmm. sister, I'm holding it up right now to the camera, yep. but it's like the little sister version of Dazzle. It's the same, it's also a rayon with a strand of metallic and mm -hmm. it gives the exact same look. So if I compare them, yep. they give that same shiny look, but this can actually fit through the eye of a needle and this is a 12 weight thread. That's right. Usually on a serger though, you're not going to fit the heavier threads through the eye of a needle. Yeah. Okay. You can. I've done it because then we can do a blanket stitch and that sort of thing. You just have to be a little more cautious. All right. Margin All righty. Here we go. So I'm just doing a three thread. Can you see? I think so. So this is a three thread overlock that I'm doing. I got a twist here, as I was showing there. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah, it looks amazing. Sergers are noisy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a really beautiful finished edge. It is. It is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this machine up for flat locking. Um, get my scissors here. I hope you don't mind that I get a drink of water because it's hot and dry. And <laughs> <hot here. laughs> sure. I'll just, Marge, once you, once you finish the flat lock, I'll have to move to Kim's. I don't want to hurry you up too much, but we're a little behind schedule right now. <laughs> then I'll, I'll be really fast. In fact, what you would do is you are going to put your dazzle in your upper looper. Then you're going to use your overlock needle that usually it will be in your left needle position because we want it wide. Then, because I don't want to take up a ton of time here, I will leave this threaded up this way, okay? I um, normally would put, here it is. 
So I would take this one off and I would put that one on. Actually back up here, because this will stick to itself. With this machine, all you do is flip the switch and we will get, here we go. And this is what you were kind of doing when you were piecing that quilt together, right? Exactly. Only I wasn't using two spools of Dazzle, I was using one. But for time's sake, I'm just going to do cheating here. And I'm going to uh, make my stitch a little bit. <clears throat> When you're doing a flat lock, you're going to have uneven tension. That's just the nature of it. And then you, here you go. That's it. And we do have um, some tutorials on YouTube that teach you how to use these threads in the serger. So if you go over to our Wonderfill YouTube channel, we actually have playlists set up for every single one of our thread lines, including Razzle and Dazzle. And we do cover a lot of the techniques that we talked about here today. So we'll make this video available afterwards because we are recording, um, but you can always hop over at any time to our YouTube channel as well. So, um, if no one has any more questions for Marge, we're going to move on to the next thing. We might come back at the end with more questions, but I'd love to move on to some different hand things. And can't, there's no better person right now than Kim. So do you want to take it over from here? Hi, everybody. Um, so I, too, have been like watching some of the comments. So I'm going to start actually where I didn't think I would start. Um, with there were a lot a lot of people that actually asked if we can crochet and absolutely we can crochet so uh, one of the things I started doing when I was at trade shows was making bracelets I would crochet the th my my threads and I, I think you can sort of see what I've done here I'll hold it steady so you can see what it looks like but that's what I was saying earlier about how you can see the variegation of the color and then I have these really fun little uh, buttons that I found, you know, you find these antique buttons in all different places. That one was from Alice in Wonderland. And then you just button it and you've got yourself, you know, like a little bracelet that you can wear. And then people loved them. So while I was there, I was making a whole bunch of bracelets as little gifts for everybody. So there's your little, uh, and you oh, can make that's, a, that's an awesome gift idea, Kim. Yeah. So you can make them all different sizes. And I have it on here right now. I have one that I was just playing with. Um, again, you know, you just use a small crochet hook. And do you have you a do you have a size that you prefer to use? Um, this one is I have no idea. Uh, oh, a two three. Oh no, a two. It says a two zero. Oh. I, I just went with a very small hook. Okay, I I think we usually also use something between like one point five to two millimeter. Yeah. Hook is what we do and, yeah. and even knitting too i have a sample here that's like a, a bit of like a shawl that we knit and that's also using like a size 1.5 to 2 millimeter knitting yeah. needles and the bracelet is something you can make with one of the spools of the, the small spools okay um, if you want to do something bigger the bigger spools would be great um the what I another one of the questions that I was asked is what I use to keep them from fraying because of what I said earlier about how we uh, wove the multiple strands together to get the color effect that we did. Um, you're going to get fraying so here, as you can see that's kind of what the fraying looks like and I just use this thread magic um, or this one's called thread heaven it's a little waxy thing you just you know throw your your uh, I'm sure you probably have all seen it. But it does help a lot, you know, to just sort of seal up the ends of that, to the seal up the ends of the threads. But you are going to get fraying because it just kind of goes with the territory. Um, one of my favorite threaders is this clover threader. It's a little wider, a little flatter, so it's easier to get your thread into it. Um, another thing you can do is just fold the thread over to get it in and pull it through. Um, if you don't have a threader, I've used just another piece of regular thread, you know, made a loop and then use that to pull it through the eye of the needle. 
Um, as far so as how, how long is your strand of thread when you're usually doing your stitching? Um, okay, so I'm a little bit of a whack job, <laughs> which any of you who've met me will probably know. I, I have a tendency to torture myself by using a longer strand. Um, probably the smarter length strand is about 22 inches, you know, about I would the, say like your forearm, like the length of your forearm is usually what we like to tell people. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Um, again, that will keep it from getting tangled, twisted, knotted. Um, if you go in smaller, you know, smaller cuts of thread. Um, I like to use a number four tapestry needle. Um, I'd like my needles to be super sharp because I like to go through multiple different um, fabrics and surfaces. Um, I also will use a chenille from anywhere from a size 18 to a 22, 24. Um, I like my eye to be relatively big, um, especially if I'm doing drizzle stitches or um, bullions because I wanna be able to get it through the fabric a little bit easier. Um, but sharp to me is, is key. Um, if I can get my thread through the eye of the needle, I don't care what size it is, just as long as it's sharp enough to get it nicely through the fabric. So back to the crochet thing, um, I incorporated it into my quilting. Um, this is, this is, these are, I wanted to create the look of Spanish moss. So uh, this is a, a little, uh, Hansel and Gretel quilt. Oh, Maura, do we have a photo of this closer up? Down here. And we are going to see if we have a photo of this. I believe you did send me a photo of it closer up. So we'll, we'll see if we can uh, um, get that on. No, it's the little house. Oh, this one, yes. You got it? So we're just going to screen share it so people can see what you're talking about as well. All right. right. I think everyone can see the closer image now of the quilt. So you can go ahead and talk about it. So... What I did is uh, where you see the lines of the crochet Spanish moss, before I did anything, I did just a, a loose running stitch with the same dazzle thread, you know, to give me the shape that I wanted. And then I went back and I crocheted into the running stitches. So I wasn't actually trying to shove uh, a, cro a crochet hook into the fabric. I actually went into um, each of the individual stitches. Um, you can, that one, I did just a chain stitch and looped it so that I would have all different lengths, but you can do any kind of crochet stitch that you like, because again, you're just going into the, the running stitch and that's the best way to do it on fabric. Um, yeah. I, did yeah, I think for people that maybe don't know your work too well, you do do like a ton, you use a ton of different textures in your fabric and everything like that. And then you pair it with of course, all your beautiful threads. And so pretty much how you use Dazzle is just purely like handwork. You see a variety of stitches anywhere from like actually doing the crochet and then incorporating it into your piece to I see in the background, you have some running stitches, you have some like French knots and, and different things like that, even in just this one piece alone. So you can yeah. definitely talk about the different types of stitches that you do with the Dazzle and everything like that. Right. So, um, which this one obviously has a lot of things in it, um, but also, um, uh, if you want to take that down, I did, um, for one of the shows that we did, I, again, I did Alice in Wonderland. So I took an old pair of jeans that have holes in them and I wore them at the show, but I did a running stitch with the dazzle up the length of the jeans. I made like, you know, different shapes. I did it on both legs. And what well, you can see there is a Cheshire cat <laughs> I again with the running stitch and then I crocheted into it to get this lacy effect which was kind of fun too and everybody was like oh my gosh how did you do that how did you do that and then I had fun and I hung a little miniature tea set off of it but um yeah that was that was kind of fun too so then um I think I think one of the only one of the only other questions was yes I I applique a lot onto wool uh, the Hansel and Gretel one that you just saw, that was a lot of wool hand dyed by a very good friend of mine. She does a lot of beautiful shibori wools, but I also do a lot on fabric and combine with wool. And you actually have a picture of this one. Yes, Alice. I do have a picture of this, this one as well. Oh, well, I have it upside down. Yes, yeah, so we're just going to screen share that so everyone can see it right now as well. 
Okay, so what I did on this one, this one only has running stitches and uh, bully, uh, uh, French knots. And what I loved about it was I wanted to create the reflection of the, the swan into water and then have the, the appearance of like flower leaves just trickling down and then again reflected in the water on the other end. So I used different colors of the, uh, of the, of the, the, the threads to get, you know, the more vibrant on the top and then the more. Uh, so on the I, I love your work because you kind of like incorporate like applique, but you also, I see you have like, this is like a, a quilt that's like bound and everything like that as well. Like, what are the steps you do? Do you do your um, hand stitching on there first or do you do that last? Like, what's your process for that? And that's a really great question because um, one of the things so beautiful about French knots with these threads is that you can sew over them. When, you know, when you do art quilts, if you do a lot of beading, you have to do the beading after you long arm so that you don't like break the needle or put holes in your quilts. With, with these threads, you can create, I mean, these things look exactly like glass beads if you see them up close. So all of that work can actually be done ahead of the long arming, which I personally love to do. So I do the applique first, and then I do all the, whatever piecing I'm gonna do, then I do the handwork, and then I actually quilt it. And I do all of it myself. I, I do the long arming as well. So yeah, that's, and then I get, I get this effect that I want. And then also I use some of these metallic threads that they were just showing that Marge was showing to bring through the metallic in the, um, in the, the deck, you know, to carry it into the background of the, of the swans. Yeah. I, I think what makes your work really unique is like, you combine like what you're doing on the machine, but then you also add so many hand elements to it as well. And it really makes it feel so artistic and I love it. <laughs> I try. So then, so then there's like, there are simpler stitches. I, I have a tendency to repeat the same stitches. I, you know, I love Sue Spargo's work and I use a lot of the same stitches. She's a friend. Um, but I also try to keep an element a bit simple because the whole composition itself is what will, you know, will appear to have been, you know, such a great undertaking when yet the, the art in itself was more simple and the composition is more comprehensive. So this one, I don't, did I give you a picture of my, of my little guy here? I think so. We are going to, yes, we do have pictures of him. Okay, so we're so just gonna screen share that now too. I'll explain him. He was, um, actually I got this really cool idea that I wanted to do the tarot card series. And so he is the magician card and I use all different types of threads. You'll see a lot of eleganza in there, which are also number eight variegated. And I decided that I really badly wanted to have his whole beard be my threads. So I used the, <laughs> it's a white and gold variegated Starry Night Dazzle. And that is a hundred million <laughs> drizzle stitches. And so that was a little bit of torture because I was loving it. All the drizzle stitches have from 14 cast ons to six or three. So I have a depth and dimension of all of the different lengths of the beard and his hair. So that was a little bit extreme for me when I was talking about simplicity, that was not it. <laughs> but I think we've all seen, um drizzle stitches but usually just like five or six but I don't think I've ever seen so many drizzle stitches on a single piece before but it almost looks like you've found something that is almost like ruggy like you like a like a rug kind of texture and like but you created that all on your own and did that all with thread which I find super amazing and I think it really just opens up people's mind to what thread can do and how much texture it can add just either using different techniques or layering them differently and 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 it really it makes this piece magical like the wizard <laughs> yeah so another thing i like to use drizzle stitches for i can just show you this little guy behind me but calissa doesn't have a picture of him uh, <laughs> 
is my Cheshire cat and he has his eyelashes are all drizzle stitches. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I do a lot of that kind of a thing. So I'm always looking for different ways to use the threads and the stitches. Um, uh, Calista, do, oh, you know what? Well, let's, do you have, do you want me to tell you which ones or do you want to just start tossing them up and I'll talk about them? Uh, uh, someone asked what weight did you use for the owl? That's the Eleganza number eight. Okay, so that's another number eight, yeah. um, number eight. So I'm, I'm gonna get Maura to open up some photos and we'll just do a quick um, kind of like show and tell thing of some of your projects and maybe yeah. how you decide to choose colors or how you decide to add the textures and what the raz or what the dazzle does for your piece. Yeah, so this one is Sleeping Beauty. Uh, again, on her, I love these threads to use for hair. And that hair is couched, but it's hand couched. So um, that, you know, now I get like this whole opportunity to go in on, this was a miniature quilt, but if to, I go into bigger quilts to really couch all these different fibers to make hair on a lot of these things. And I also use these threads a lot if I'm making actual three-dimensional dolls. It's, it's just amazing. It's so much fun to do that with it. Um, around the little green tree tops are, um, are bullions and uh, seed stitches. And then there's tons of French knots throughout. And then again, you can see like in the drapes, I, I'll use silks. I use all different kinds of crazy fabrics and just have a really good time. Um, a lot of times the fabrics will inspire which of the threads I use. And sometimes the threads will inspire what kind of fabric I look for to really pop those threads. Again, you're doing all your hand stitching first and then doing the quilting afterwards? Yes. Okay. Yep, and you can't really see, but her eyelashes are just, actually it's decabob, it's a black. Oh, <laughs> like our very fine 80 weight thread. Yeah, I wanted her eyelashes to be super fine because it's really small. So I actually did embroider her eyes, her eyelashes with that. Awesome. Maura, do you want to hop on to the next piece? Sure. Um, so this is, I did a series that was a Zodiac and this is Aries the Ram. And you can see on him that the eyelashes are again, those drizzle stitches. And then I did bullions around the edges of all of the flowers. And again, it's not a ton of metallic, but it just, it gives it a little bit of pop. And in the stars and the grunge and the background fabric, in the centers, I did just a little French knot, which gave it just a little bit of sparkle, which was kind of fun. And so again, it's just, you know, it's a nice little accent. The wording in the bottom is done with, um, with a number eight uh, black embroidery floss by Wonderful. Let me go to the next guy. So this little bird, um, I love this one because um, what Calissa was saying, a lot of me using different fabrics and whatnot, the tree branches are a brown fabric that we actually, I laid a lace over the top of. Um, and then, so it very much used similar in the same way as couching, but then I went and hand and um, applique around the edges of it. And then the flowers are, are actually um, crocheted and then stitched down with, uh, with the Starry Night Dazzles. Yeah, I love your pieces always add a lot of textural elements to it. It makes it very fun to look at. Yeah, and I use a lot of, you know, embroidery, but uh, embroidery stitches, but not a ton. You know, like you can see a little bit in the leaves and stuff, mm -hmm. but I, I use just enough just to have some fun, but not enough to make myself want to shoot myself for like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> <sighs> This one I had, I mean, I'm so proud of her and I love her so much. This is Beauty and the Beast. And I painted this on fabric. So um, the whole thing is painted with acrylic and then embroidered. Um, all the black lines are done with the black number eight embroidery floss. And then there's bullions in her, in her dress. They're flying seeds, uh, uh, seed stitches. There are a stitch in the beast uh, suit that I made up. I just started, I did uh, straight stitches and then I did a zigzag with a- I a, think uh, 
that reminds me of like this sample I was showing earlier where you can pretty much create a fabric by, by yeah. just adding stitches onto there and creating like a brand new look. Cause I actually didn't even know that was not like a different fabric or whatever. Cause it actually looked very different when you added those stitches on there and it creates like its own piece. Yep, all stitches, all just added on to the piece that I had painted. And then I put, um, I put French knots in her hair to just give it a little bit of sparkle. And I did a little bit of French knots in the leaves again, just to give it a little bit of a pop. And uh, again, the, the clothing, I did a lot more elaborate handwork, but I just really had such a good time with this one. And it was so fun because, you know, coming from painting it, to embroidering it and seeing everything pop and come to life. And again, because she was bigger, I did her eyelashes with the number eight embroidery thread. Embroidery. Beautiful. Yeah. This guy, this is a big quilt. And so I had a lot of fun with this one. The detail work on, oh, I did give you my little, my, my Cheshire cat. Yeah, I didn't realize you gave me that photo either. And we'll take a closer <laughs> look in a second. Oh, there it is. Um, so on this one, I used, again, my friend um, who did the wools also dyed uh, velvets with the shibori technique. And I used bouillons um, on those. And then in the center of the flowers, I did drizzle stitches. I did uh, French knots. Um, I did eyelashes on the unicorn. And then I did some more bouillons around the edges of the ears. And I, again, use a lot of um, velvet and cotton and just all different kinds of scraps of, of fabrics, did all the applique, then the stitching, and then the long arming. And I did do, as you can see in the background, I, there's like these little random stems that have uh, um, their running stitches with French knots in them. The I print. think adding, the, uh, adding texture with the dazzle makes a huge difference because my eye is really drawn to the horn right away because it almost like pops off the quilt compared to everything else that's on it. Yeah, in his hoof, I also did like some cross stitching too with the dazzles that are just, it, it was really beautiful. And it just, you know, it went with the unicorn making it very magical. So beautiful. that was very fun. Maybe we can quickly look at, look at the cat again. And then yeah, there's my little cat again. Oh, that's a much better picture. So yeah, that was done for, um, for us, for one of our quilt shows, so. Yeah, but you can see the drizzle stitches that I used for his eyelashes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, and this guy, so this is a, a part of a huge quilt that you're gonna see a couple more of the, the close-ups from the panels. It's called Wild and Free. It was a block of the month. And um, you can see in the horns of the giraffe, I used one of the Starry Night Dazzles to do a bunch of little French knots all together to give it that texture. And then I used the number eight black embroidery floss to do the drizzle stitch eyelashes on him as well. And then there's like some little French knots and little straight stitches in the leaves and whatnot. So again, just a little bit of accent work, you know, here and there, you know. I, yeah, I think it really shows off very well, like how the thread looks against just even like cotton fabric, even though the rayon does carry a sheen, it's not in your face and you can you can definitely see it because you have a lot of um, stitches in the in the horns and stuff but they're not taking away or really like sparkling or shimmering compared to everything else but you can definitely tell there's a sheen there and and that's the thing I love so much about rayon thread it's like subtle it's there it's elegant but it's like not in your face exactly it's it to me it's just it gives just a little bit of enhancement instead of turning it into a big bling thing. It's not all big and blingy. It just, I love the accent that it provides. Awesome. And then I think finally we, we have your lion. My lion and he has his gold eyelashes. So yeah, that was, you know, he, again, this one, um, you know, it was like, it, it was pieced and collaged and applique, turned applique, raw edge applique, a lot of different techniques, a lot of different fabrics. And then, you know, just plugging in those threads to give him, you know, the eyelashes. And then there's a little, you know, number eight white to do the dots in the center of his eyes. Yeah. You know, this 
you know, again, it's just so wonderful to be able to use these for accent work. I think um, what your pieces goes to show is just don't be afraid of mixing those techniques. Just because you did 99% of your quilt on the machine and everything like that, don't be afraid to go in and like add those hand elements as well, because I think it really brings it to life compared to if you maybe decided to stitch those eyelashes on on the machine, even if you did use a heavier thread, but the way it pops off, just doing a bit of hand embroidery and adding those elements really gives it this very unique touch and makes it come alive and look a lot more 3D than as if you would just do everything on the machine, so. And actually to your point though, I, I have also thread painted eyelashes and shadowing and, sh and shading, you know? So again, this is just, this is the hand dimension, but there's so many, and I am one that will use both. Um, I, it doesn't have to be a one or the other, you know, there's yeah, so many I applications. I think very often you see usually just one, like people tend to just do it all on the machine or they'll like go and start a hand project. And pretty much most of that is like the hand project. But I think we really want to inspire people here to try different elements, mixing different things together, playing with colors and texture and stuff like that. Because just because you started with a 50 weight thread on your quilt doesn't mean you have to stick with 50 weight all the way through. Even if you want to go on the machine and add the 12 weight or add the eight weight, it really creates layers onto your piece and it makes it really interesting and, and, and come alive. I think it like, pops off the page and, and makes it unique. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing those beautiful pieces. I think we're going to kind of wind down and maybe if anyone else has any questions that they want to have answered, we would do that now. I have some questions that people sent in from um, online earlier, and I think we've answered most of them. There's not a ton more to um, ask, but if you guys have anything else, like, please throw that into the comments right now. I think we covered most of the usages and we did cover the needle sizes. Again, we mentioned chenille. Kim uses anything from number 18 to 22 and we recommend number 22 as well. And, um, I believe you personally ch like to use some other needles that you mentioned. Sorry, I forgot which ones they were. A tapestry or a chenille, you know, and I, oh, and tapestry I or chenille again. Yeah me it had just then, wanted to be sharp exactly and then um when you are doing your crocheting or knitting you can just use a 1.5 to 2 millimeter whether that's the knitting needle this was done i think this is done on a, on a knitting machine because it's so perfect but you can definitely knit by hand as well and um so for the hooks and the needles those are 1.5 to 2 um i don't think i see a ton of questions coming in which is really good because i think that means we covered most of everyone's um, questions and comments. I do want to get into the winners. Some people get to try your beautiful threads and hopefully they get inspired. Um, there's actually some questions I think earlier about whether or not people can get your patterns, Kim. And we did just direct them to your website. I don't know if you have anything about your website you'd like to talk about. Um, my website's pretty comprehensive and pretty easy. It has all of our patterns. Um, it's www.starrynighthollow.com. And yeah, everything is on there. Our, the threads are on there. The patterns are on there. Um, pretty much everything. We actually also have, uh, we have um, a drop down that will take you to actually me demonstrating how to do all the stitches that I use, which actually a lot of them come from, I did with Wonderfill. So um, we have a lot of that. We have some pattern tutorials as well. So yeah. Awesome. I just want to thank everyone for staying tuned all the way till the end and um, make sure you're looking out for our next newsletter and our next thread talk. Thank you, Kim, as well for joining us so long today. I'm sorry we ran a little bit over time today, but there was just so much information to share. So um, I'm really glad you guys all stayed patient and stuck with us and we hope you learned something new and uh, we'll see you next time so enjoy some of that summer weather and have a great day thank you everyone bye
Bye. Bye.